friends. Welcome back to Cal. I'm still Miss Sarah. Hmm. Pretty sure I'm still Miss Tina. That's good. Okay. And Miss Nancy's here today. Yay! Hi. We missed you, Miss Nancy. Oh, thank we you. did. It's been a while. Let's get started with a prayer. Sounds good. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us here this morning as we come to learn and worship you. Amen. Amen. You don't, by chance, know why that's here, do you? I don't. It looks a little heavy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually in the sanctuary for baptism, but there's not usually a duck on it. No, I'm <laughs> I've never seen a duck on it. Yeah. That is unusual. Hmm. I think there's a note on the duck. There's a little piece of paper under the duck here. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Today, the role of a white dove is being played by me, a white duck. All right. Yeah. Look inside the font. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't clear stuff up much, my little friend. No. Uh, let's see what's inside the font. There's usually just a bowl with some water. There's, there is some water. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, go, bud. And it's a, the note's in a baggie. Well, that's good, since there's water. There's water in there. It says to read page 202 from the Growing in God's Love Story Bible. Okay. Okay. Let's see. We can do that, probably. Look at that. Good job, Doc. You have marked it for us. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. And we'll thank our friends at Flyway Books. They give us permission to use this Bible during our lessons. Mm -hmm. and the story's an awesome day. Some people were baptized when they were tiny babies. Others are baptized when they're children. And some are baptized when they're adults. You may or may not have been baptized, and that's okay too. But would you be surprised to learn that Jesus was baptized when he was 30 years old? John, the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, grew up to be a prophet of God. And when he was born, his father said that he would be a prophet. Now people gathered around John, who was called John the Baptizer. He helped people get ready for Jesus. Besides baptizing people, he taught them about sharing and being honest. Good lessons. John talked about God as if he knew what he was saying. Some people asked him, are you the one sent by God? No, no, John said. I'm here to help you get ready for Jesus, the one God will send. One day, along with people, Jesus came to the Jordan River. John was standing in the river, baptizing people. When Jesus came to him, he baptized Jesus. If I remember right, at first he was kind of like, oh, dude, I don't know. Jesus said, no, nah, it's fine, go ahead. <laughs> And that's exactly how the conversation went. <laughs> After Jesus was baptized, he prayed to God. The heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit came down in the shape of a dove. Okay. A voice from heaven said, Jesus, you are my child. I love you very much. You make me happy. Then Jesus left the river, and John continued to baptize people. Okay, well, I get why our friend the duck is acting as a dove. Yeah. Do you remember your baptism? Um, I don't. Now, I don't know if it's because I was only three months old or because I slept through it. Um, I remember the baptism of a lot of our friends who are watching. Um, do you remember yours? Nope. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I know I was baptized. I'm told that that happened, but I was apparently very little when it happened. So that's something we have in common there then, too, when we were little. <laughs> so like I said, this is from the sanctuary. It's called the Baptismal Farm. And they look a little different in different churches. Jesus was baptized in a river. There's some people who still do that. 
some churches actually have a pool inside the church, or they'll do it outside in a, in a pool. We saw one of those um, inside the pool church ones on a mission trip in, to Indianapolis a while back. Um, John and Elliot's mom and dad might remember that. Um, it was in a church, church had closed, and then a new group bought it, and they were going to start a new church. And so we were helping get the building ready, and we looked at it. We had no idea <laughs> what it was at first. We were like, hmm. I guess no water left in it. There's no water. Okay. Um, because, you know, that's, this is what we're used to seeing. So. Sure. Okay. This is the one we use for baptisms here. Uh, we baptize babies most of the time, but someone can be baptized at any age. That's right. We baptize babies. The whole church family helps out. Um, they make a promise to help that baby learn about Jesus and to treat them like family and make them a part of God's family. And that's, that's one of my favorite parts, is the part where everybody promises to help out with that, because that's a big job. It could take a lot of people, because you know, we figure things out together. Everybody doesn't know everything about everything. What? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes we baptize an older child or an adult. Um, it, with the children, it might be their choice or it might be their families. Um, adults who weren't baptized as babies or children can make that choice when they're older and be baptized too. I like that we believe in our church that it, it's not a thing that has to be done on the schedule. It's not a box that has to get checked off. It can wait for the right time. God made us each individually, but he still calls us through our families or through our own choices to be part of his family. All of us being individuals. That's, that's got me thinking of the song. <laughs> Not surprising. I know. Miss Nancy, would you share God Made Me? Sure. Somebody was baptized. A light shone down, and the Holy Spirit flew down like a bird, and everyone could hear God saying, This is my child, and I love them. They make me happy. That would be really awesome. I have a feeling it may still happen, but it would be cool to actually be able to see the Yeah, Earth. yeah. So that's, that's really what faith is like. Having a feeling that something like that happens. God telling us every day that we're his children, that he loves us, and we make him happy. Mm -hmm. 
You know, that version of the story doesn't say what happened after Jesus was baptized. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It just said he went away from the river, I think. Mm -hmm. and what happens after that, that's really a whole other story. Sure. Uh, but that's why we switch back to purple. And it's uh, after he left the river, Jesus went out into the wilderness to fast. So he didn't eat. And he prayed for 40 days. Wow. All right. Well, we learned a few weeks ago that purple was for Advent and Lent. And Advent just ended a bit ago. So it must be Lent now. It is. So Lent started on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. It lasts till Easter. It ends at, on April 3rd, that Saturday right before Easter at midnight. It's 40 days for us, not counting Sundays. Somebody got creative there. Mm -hmm. And it's a time to prepare like Advent was. But instead of preparing for Jesus' birth and having kind of a little bit of a party atmosphere with the candles and the decorations, um, we're preparing for Good Friday and Easter when Jesus dies but then raises again. Not quite the same kind of celebration as Advent. Probably. Not quite. Uh, it's meant to be a time where we think a little bit more about our sins or you know, the ways that we might have disappointed God. It might be a day where he doesn't say, Sarah makes me happy. Yeah, that mm -hmm. happens. <laughs> um, but it's a time to remember to say that we're sorry for those things. Even try to think of ways to show that we're going to try not to do them again. Oh, all right. That's what's called seeking forgiveness and, and asking and having repentance. So many times during Lent, you'll hear about folks giving things up, like chocolate, mm. Mm. or adding <laughs> things in, like trying to pray more, or maybe at a certain time of the day, um, or read their Bible or a book about faith, something to help them focus. Yeah, yeah. And both of those things can be challenging, making the time to do something mm -hmm. that you aren't already doing, or trying really hard to not do something or give something up that you really like. Um, those can be hard. They can be challenging, and I think that's why people do it. Um, helps them to grow with God. I don't think it was easy for Jesus to be in the not wilderness. Not eat for 40 days. Not eat for 40 cool. days. I imagine there were, I don't know, I hear wilderness, I think of bugs and itchy mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so we try to challenge ourselves and maybe not to that extreme during Lent. Um, so maybe take some time to talk with the people in your house. Mm -hmm. Uh, think about what you could do, you know, either as a group or individuals to honor Lent. And if you're one of our grown-up friends that's watching um, and you're by yourself, just you can still participate in that. Think about something that maybe you want to add in or give up that makes it, would make you grow closer to God either way. So do we have any activities to go along with this lesson today? Well, um, we've got coloring pages aplenty. For Jesus' baptism. I All right. had a good time. Darlene and I found a lot of good pictures for coloring. I'll be honest, Lent totally snuck up. <laughs> so my answer to that is we'll see what we can come up with for Lent. <laughs> um, still looking and working on that. But we can pray. Okay. We can pray. Uh, don't forget if you ever have prayer requests, if you have things you want us to pray for, for you or your family or a friend, let us know and we'll include them and lift them up in our prayers. So let's pray now. Dear God, we thank you for this time together, this time to celebrate your baptism. We rejoice that you kind of set the example in that and that we all get to share in that sacrament with you. We thank you for this time of Lent, this time to prepare our hearts for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye.